As we come to the end of the year 2016, I feel it's important that we sort of go over the network improvements and developments and sort of upgrades and changes that have happened over the past 12 months of this year. And just to start this off, I'm going to do this video on the Network O2, which is owned by Telefonica. Now, a lot has changed in with regards to O2 over the past year. Their 4G coverage footprint has shot up, so the last O2 quarterly report I saw stated a 15% coverage increase for outdoor population year on year. So that is quite a large gain in 4G population coverage. Although gaining 4G coverage is nothing too surprising really. You sort of expect operators to do it, especially in the sort of period after the auctions when you expect the sort of coverage of the new technology to skyrocket. So it's really the additional technologies and developments we've seen that are of the most interest. Now, Due to O2's spectrum holding of the 10 megahertz paired of 800 megahertz, and then the refarm of the 1800 megahertz to 4G, which provides paired 5 megahertz, that works fine for most areas. Although the most critically dense areas, you sort of do need a little bit more capacity. And O2 has come out with the more novel approaches, which I've covered in a detailed capacity approaches video so they use things like six sector masts which obviously therefore have double the number of sectors to a typical three sector mast which then means that that area has a significantly improved capacity and these are very complicated masts to sort of set up wire and integrate into a network due to sort of aligning all the sectors and optimizing the network however o2 has got quite a few above three sector masts across London, certainly across North London there are quite a few now. O2 also has a massive portfolio of microcells which are sort of little masts that are integrated into a homogeneous network. So they're basically just small versions of the big rooftop and sort of roadside masts that you see typically. Now these are designed to serve a small area and most commonly work just 3G 2100 MHz, although some of them are now gaining 4G 1800 MHz to boost the LTE capacity in the area as well as the UMTS 3G. O2 has also been doing some actually quite new market things. So they've been doing higher order MIMO. So this is increasing the number of sort of antennas they have. And by increasing it from say two antennas for transmit and receive to four, you then get increased throughput, so actually increased performance on devices that support it, and there aren't really any devices on the market at the moment that do support higher order MIMO, unfortunately, although it does have a significant benefit for devices that only support two by two, for example, in that by having the increased receive antennas, so increased receive diversity, you get improved performance of devices on the cell edge of the mast and um, poor performance in the cell edge is sort of a big issue so by using the higher order MIMO you then improve the cell edge performance which then actually lifts up the performance of the cell footprint quite a lot because cell edge users consume disproportionate amounts of sort of resources on the site due to them being on the edge of reception. So just sort of a way I think about it is sort of trying to speak to someone really far away in a crowd. You sort of have to repeat what you're saying, you have to shout, you have to listen extra carefully. And it is sort of very draining and it slows you down, especially if you're trying to commun communicate with other people at the same time. Clearly, the, your sort of capacity is massively reduced by only there only being, say, one person on the edge. So actually doing higher order MIMO is actually a rather significant thing to do. And much like the six sector mast, it does require quite a lot of sort of mast build complexity and also setup complexity as well, due to the number of antennas basically involved. Because O2 on say site embarking has four by four MIMO on band twenty, so eight hundred and band three, so eighteen hundred. So each of those 
is say four feeders because of the four by four nature of them. So that's vastly more than say the four feeders that you'd use for 1800 and 800 normally split across the three sacks of site. That's a lot more feeders in total and a lot more sort of BTS equipment as well. Now, unfortunately, I've not seen the 4x4 MIMO expanding that much out of certain areas of London. Although, like I say, it is a very sort of complex thing to roll out. So it's not really something that you'd stick everywhere. And so, like I say, at the moment, the user device base isn't really there to take optimum benefit out of it. So maybe in 2017, when more devices in the market take hold and can benefit from those features, we'll see rather more sort of 4x4 MIMO taking hold in O2 areas. Now these 4x4 MIMO sites are not just sort of broadcasting 4x4 as the only sort of technological advancement on them. They were also broadcasting using the TM4 modulation scheme which is a higher order modulation scheme compared to the sort of TM3 and even TM2 that you normally see and this basically just ensures again that you can get sort of more capacity out of the existing bandwidth that you have and talking of very new things to hit the sort of O2 technology sphere um, is 4G 2100 megahertz so just as they refarmed their 1800 megahertz 2G to 4G uh, with 5 megahertz of paired bandwidth the 4G 2100 MHz is 5 MHz refarmed from 3G on 2100 MHz at this point in time. Now I recently, very recently did a video about showing it in Lincoln where there are four sites at the moment that I found broadcasting 4G 2100 on 5 MHz. Now they weren't carry aggregating any band with band 1, although with o 2 band 1, band 3 and band 20, they are quite uh, well supported bands for carrier aggregation and in total if the band 1 to 2100 is 5 megahertz then you've got 5, 5, 20, 5, 5, 10, so that's 20 megahertz total bandwidth which gets you a sort of maximum throughput of around about 150 megabits per second as an absolute maximum although carry aggregating three bands does have sort of like a lot quite a lot of overheads and complexity associated with it and obviously you very rarely are in sort of cell conditions pursuant to getting near 100 percent of the maximum capacity although of course in future when the circuit switch voice load drops to a sufficient level then potentially they can move the entire 2100 pair spectrum over to 4G so that's 10 megahertz of 2100 for 4G so that brings the total 4G spectrum in that case up to 25 megahertz which is sort of quite a major jump from say 15 megahertz of 818 or even just 10 of 800 so it will have a sort of quite a noticeable improvement in LTE performance when they do that and certainly Vodafone has been doing 4G on 2100 MHz for a few months now at 10 MHz so 10 MHz of 4G 2100 and 10 MHz of 4G 800 and you know the actual performance you get from it is actually very good and it has caused a very noticeable uplift in the areas in which it has been deployed so I do look forward to seeing more of that in future so O2 really is going for getting absolutely everything out of the spectrum that they own. So in terms of 2017, I can see more of these sort of capacity approaches happening because LTE data use is soaring every year. So they will, there is going to be sort of more capacity approaches happening in future and also I think in 2017, O2 will probably do Vaulty as well, which will then bring the voice load off the circuit switch 2G and 3G onto 4G, which then puts sort of more demand onto the 4G and less on the 2G and 3G, which of course then has the benefit that the more 2G and 3G spectrum can be moved over to 4G. So that's all rather good. So it is sort of a sort of circle, if you like, where everything's sort of intertwined quite well. But certainly, EM3 have been doing Vaulty for sort of a while now. 
and certainly it seems that Vodafone's been sort of trialling it in various different forms. So I'm pretty sure O2 will do Volti in 2017. And certainly, I mean, O2's seen their smartphone usage on their network rise massively, which you can see in their sort of quarterly fi uh, figures. So there will be more devices hitting the sort of network all the time that will support Volti. So it does sort of make natural progression to move to it because also 4G Spectrum, 4G is more efficient at using Spectrum than 2G and 3G are so it makes sense really to move as much 2G and 3G over to 4G as possible so um, thanks for watching this I hope you've enjoyed it and if you have any ideas of what you think O2 is going to do in the next in the coming sort of year 2017 then post in the comments and I hope to do sort of videos like this for the remaining mobile operators very soon. Thanks again.